Hey everybody, thanks for being here. This week we're on a special trip to the Florida Everglades for largemouth bass. Now if you want to learn how to catch more fish, stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf and this is Angler West Television. Everglades, once considered a vast wasteland of shallow swamp, is now highly regarded as an important ecosystem. The fact that beneath the water and grass lies only several inches of soil on top of solid limestone bedrock helped to prevent its development for agriculture, industry, or housing. There have been many man-made changes including the excavation of a canal system, which for better or worse did create some amazing bass fishing. Today we're with legendary bass angler Roland Martin, along with Mick Saunders of Lunacy, creator of the Cushit. After winding our way through the waterways, we've reached a canal full of largemouth bass. Hey folks, Roland Martin here. We're deep in the Everglades. We're gonna do some airboating, some bass fishing, and, and Mick, we, we, we got you here. You're the inventor and creator of, of, of this Cushit. I use them all the time on my right, rods. Right. Boy, I love them. I just yeah, love them. Yeah, I know, I know. Now, this is a big, powerful rod, I guess, so I'm a frog rod. And with this rod, with this cushion that, that Mick has, I can put it in my stomach like this, and I can really, really hog them out of there. If I get a big bass, I can really do a number on getting them out of there. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to use some frogs on them heavy tackle. Now, I got you with some spinning tackle there. They'll hit. There's all sorts of bass, and there's all sorts of... Uh, Mayan cichlids, which is another kind of a uh -huh. aquarium fish, uh -huh. and there's oscars, uh -huh. which you've seen in, in, the, uh -huh. in many of the, of the aquariums, uh -huh. and then there's garfish, there's mudfish, so every, you're going to catch a little bit of everything on worms and, and jigs like you have, and maybe uh -huh. I'll have you throw a crankbait. In the meantime, I'm going to try some heavy lily pads with this one to see if I can't get a big bass on a frog. Okay. Hey folks, don't go away. There's going to be some exciting fishing down here in the Everglades, and don't forget the alligators. People don't realize the Everglades and what the Everglades are. Everglades are nothing but a rock, limestone sh cap shield, about 150 square miles or 200 square miles of just rock. That's where we're fishing. This this rock, this if if I were right there, it's all solid rock. That's just this was blasted with dynamite and big drag lines to to make this because ro there's rock everywhere, just a foot under the ground. Yep. All through the Everglades is solid rock. You got one. Hey, 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 he's got one, son. He's got one. What you got? What you got? Oh, yeah, nice little bass. Nice little bass. There we go. Yeah. Nice little bass. Okay. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Lots of bass on, on the Cinco. That's a big deal right now. But the rock are, are just everywhere. And so uh, this is all dug out uh, 30, 40, 50 years ago. All these Everglades are, uh, in fact, the issue now is because of the red tide that you've heard of in, in the coast of Florida. One of the issues is this water that they, cannot, they made these canals, the Corps of Engineers dug them 30, 40 years ago, and it drains the Everglades into the, into the ocean. But it doesn't allow the water to filter through the Everglades as much as it did before. So they're thinking now, if they stop the flow of these canals, block them off, and let the water sheet flow through all the marsh and through all the rest of the Everglades, it'll be a better water quality. When it finally reaches the coast, the water will be cleaner. And so they think that that's gonna help with the red tide. Mick, this is another good application for you, push it right here. This is my standard flipping stick. Yeah. And this is a seven and a, well, a seven, three, uh, Emperor series by uh, uh, this is a, a favorite rod and this is Emperor series and see what I do here when I'm flipping a jig I'll do a little bit different I'll flip it in like this and I'll put the I'll put the rod right here like this now, this is the way I work it so by power fishing there's a whole deal I keep telling everybody there's a couple ways to fish there's there's the ultralight way that you're fishing with this little rod you don't need a cushion there uh. you, you, you light tackle but for power fishing I'm throwing into this heavy brush and cover this is where the cushion is really a deal. I'm throwing way back into places like that, and I'm busting them out of there. I got 65 pound test braid, and I'm ready to really do battle. 
But I need that, I need that cushion. I need that cushion. That's the whole key to busting them out of that heavy brush. It's so much easier when you can anchor that, that rod into my stomach like I'm doing right now. And that's power fishing at its best. That's what really makes power fishing really shine is this cushion. I know. It really helps. Welcome back to the Florida Everglades. I'm Justin Wolf. We're fishing out of Roland Martin's airboat camp deep in the Everglades, which is basically a shallow, slow moving river, 60 miles wide by 100 miles long. Airboats are a necessity as they can travel over open water, grass, and even dry land. By airboat, we've traveled to a man made canal that offers deeper water and excellent bass fishing. So I'll see if I can get off. Get a frogfish going here. Nope, I didn't throw far enough. Oh, that was a really oh, good one. Man. That was really a big one too. That right on the pot, it was really a big old bass. Got something. A nice really bass. Bad. Nice bass. Nice bass. Yeah. That's a nice bass. There we go. They're hitting that. They're hitting that cinco. They're hitting that cinco. That's for sure. <laughs> the cinco is the number one lure in this in this area. But for the biggest fish I've ever caught were on top water. So yeah. some. So, so. But that's that's a nice bass. That's that's a good bass. Yeah. yeah There's some <laughs> big ones in here. The guys, they for the most part catch and release fish. So they, they, I have a scale, I have a real accurate scale and we'll weigh them. <laughs> if we get one. <laughs> but, but all these guys like at the airboat camp, I caught a 10 pounder. Oh but yeah. In reality, yeah. hey, oh, yeah. I put them on the scale. Those 10 pounders they say they catch are oh, more yeah. like seven and eight pounds. But yeah, there's some yeah. good bass in here. I'm not saying there's not any big bass, but there's very few 10 pound bass. Right. <clears throat> so bait whack right here. Nope. <laughs> oh. Uh, little one. Little one. Little ones are <laughs> little frogs are. The frog is getting little fish to bite. I'm missing them. What you got, son? Little bass? Yeah, nice bass. <laughs> Mick is catching them because I'm telling you this the Cinco <laughs> is king bait. You catch more fish on Cinco's than anything else. The only thing is, I'm being a little bit reluctant, and I want to catch a bigger fish. So I'm going to kind of stay with the frog in hopes to catch a monster. But he's catching a lot of fish. That's that's for sure. That's that's Inko. You can't beat it. I used to tell everybody. I used to tell everybody, Mick. I said. Any any color Cinco will work as long as it's a 297 green pumpkin. <laughs> any color will work. But uh, actually, actually, you're using a uh, uh, watermelon red uh, green pumpkin. So, yeah, there's a lot of different colors. Get one this cast. Oh, I got one. I want to hit it. You hit it again. I got him. Oh, I had him on. <laughs> that was calling the shot. <laughs> I missed him. These fish aren't, aren't taking it good. They're not taking it good. They're hitting it. There. That's a typical bass. But if you notice, these bass that are hitting the frog are going to be a better quality fish. That's. That's not a big one. I had way bigger ones to bite the frog today, but at least. And the other thing why you know that's not a good deal, when they're really biting it good, they get the frog like that. They'll have it down their mouth, and that's on the outside of his mouth. So that's that means they're not biting it like they're supposed to. But if I keep throwing this frog, there's a chance I'll get an eight pound bass. Now, Mick will throw this, the Cinco and he'll catch 10 times more fish than I will. 
But and, and an eight pound bass. <laughs> maybe an eight pound bass. You know, that's the thing. If <laughs> if this were a major league fishing deal where you just count all the fish as one, then you'd be leading the tournament. But if this was a BASS tournament where uh, <laughs> where we're looking for big fish, you know, then I'd win. You know, so it's like a two different right. two different concepts here. Right. Two different concepts. Oh, there's a. Oh, I oh, saw that bass. Man. I saw him, and he didn't take it. Yeah, I saw him roll up, and just, right, right there, he just rolled up. It was a nice bass, big as that last one I caught. Good spot. There we are. Ooh, he yeah. took it. He just took it out. I didn't even see him. I looked around to see if the, what was happening, and he took it just out of nowhere, right on the side of the deal. He followed it out. Nice bass. Nice bass. Yeah, See, with this heavy braid, <laughs> also these rods float. See the cushion? The cushion floats them. You can drop the rods and the thing will still float. <laughs> that was a kind of a crazy kind of deal there. He hit way out in the middle of the canal, but he had followed it out of the, out of the weeds is the deal. We're in the Florida Everglades, home to over 350 bird species and at least 40 types of mammals, including manatees, bears, and cougars. We're fishing with Roland Martin and Mick Saunders in the deeper water of a canal that not only attracts huge numbers of bass as the water recedes in early spring, but also is home to an enormous number of alligators, which are sort of like East Coast sea lions from a West Coast fisherman's perspective. Gar. I hate those gars. Hang on, gars. That's not good. Not good. But I have pliers. I don't think he's torn the thing up too bad. They'll hold. Oh. oh my god. Gator right here. Come on, I can't get the thing out of the water. Gator's trying to get my gar. He almost got my whole deal. That was almost a bad deal. Almost a bad deal. Almost lost my plug and everything. Not quite. He chickened out at the last minute. Woo! The gator bot got, got that deal. He almost got my lure. And that was the main thing. I didn't care about the gar fish so much. When the gators hit, they don't care what's on the line. It could be a top order plug, they don't care. They eat it. Oh, there. Fair, fair fish. Fair fish. Fair fish. Little frog time. Okay. Nice decent bass. Nice decent bass. I tell you this frog, it's getting later in the day now. Bigger and bigger fish are starting to bite. And it's all on this frog. And that, he sucked it down real funny because I didn't even, I pulled it out from the weeds. I threw it back in there. Probably He was probably in there, probably fought it out. And when I pulled it, pulled it like I'm doing now, I got it on the outside and just kind of slowed it down right there. And he just came up and just sucked it down. Yeah, he's on. Nice bass. Nice bass. <laughs> frogfish. Yes, sir, frogfish. And the gator was right there. I thought the gator was going to get me, but I got the gut around the gator. Back to the boat. <laughs> Uh, 
Nice little bass. Boy, this frog, <laughs> it, it, what it is, there's all kind of holes in it now. If you look real close, I really should replace it yeah. because it's taking a lot of water. Garfish have hit it and every yeah, kind of huh. fish have hit it, it's kind of torn up. When they get this bad and they have to squeeze the water out all the time, yeah. it's time to replace the frog. <laughs> He ate that thing up. Yes, sir. That's what it's all about. Big old bass like that one. Yes, sir. Ate that frog. I love it. He hit it so good, he took it. And I don't think I would have gotten him if he hadn't swallowed it as well as he did. That's a nice one. Ate the frog. And when they hit it down like that, then you, you, you got a pretty good chance of hooking them, even in the lily pads. Now with the 65 pound braid, I pull the lily's pads up from the roots, and that's that's power fishing. And without the setup that I have, I just couldn't get those big fish out of there. Welcome back to the Florida Everglades. I'm Justin Wolf. Roland Martin and Nick Saunders are putting together an excellent day of fishing which has only become better as the water warms. Power fishing with Spro frogs has been highly productive. We began with an unseasonably cool morning, but now the water temperature and bite is heating up. It's just plain fun watching the bass explode out of the lily pads. When a bass eats your frog like that, you know the bite is on. Also, worm fishing with Yamamoto Senkos has produced one bite after another but weedless swim baits like the Yamamoto hardtail are also highly effective. Hardtail fish, hardtail fish. You know, it's funny, we're coming down this canal and we came through this one sp section a couple hours ago and we caught a bunch of good ones and now we're coming back through it again and guess what, they're here again. So it's yeah. like, it's like this canal is like 12, 14 miles long. And this little mile stretch right here seems to be the best. Seems to be awful good. Okay, what I'm doing now, and I'm trying different colors. I'm trying this, this watermelon red and it's really working well. And, uh, and it's, I like a screw lock on, on my hardtails. And what I do is this screw lock is on a, that's on a six or seven odd hook right there. I come into the front of it and I screw it in there just like this. And it's really, really a good way of doing swim baits. And this is a weighted, kind of a weighted hook and I'll go right through the back and I'll come out so that the hook is just kind of on the back. Then I have a little eighth of an ounce weight here. So the whole deal is a little heavier. And now I can throw right down the edge of the shoreline my hardtail. Now I don't, I'm out of position. I, I don't have a good hook set position right now. As I don't kind of do now. I'm a power fisherman. I use a big powerful rod, big powerful braid, and of course this, this cushion. Now to make it all work to be powerful, powerful, I'm going to throw it out there. I'm going to turn my body this way so I can put my rod right here and anchor it solid. Now with the hook set that I'm going to give it, I can just really rock and roll on them. I, that's just a small one, but the point is, <laughs> the point is, yeah, I got a perfect hook set. Right. I got a perfect hook set. And when you're and hook, it was and when you're hook it, and and so there was absolutely I drove that hook right in his head. And when and you're so, hooking them all the time like that, that well, really what saves it really it. pays off. Is in a bass boat. See, this boat's all screwy because half the time yeah. we're throwing this way and we're throwing this way and we don't have the position. <laughs> but if I, if we're on my bass boat, I'm facing forward. I can throw down the canal like I'm doing here, uh -huh. turn my body sideways like this, and now I'm in the right position. Right. I can. I'm ready to just cross their eyes because I got this thing anchored right here, 
and I can, it's a powerful, powerful, powerful deal. But anyway, with this boat <laughs> drifting around like it is, <laughs> I can't always get the right position. <laughs> but right now I'm in the right, in the perfect position. Two casts, two fish. Do that. Hey, all right. Two casts, two fish. It's just the, it's just the, it's just the physics of it. Nice one, Mick. Yes, sir. <laughs> Fishing with rolling. <laughs> there's one. There's one. There's one. Oh, man. Good one. Big one. I got a big. Oh, yeah. Look at him. Oh, son. Woo. That's what Everglades fishing is all about, son. A couple big old bass. Look at this guy. Woo, son. Now we're talking. Yeah. Now we're talking. Big old bass. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I don't know how many more fish we're going to catch today, but we've caught a hundred bass and some big ones too. Yeah. Caught them a lot on the frog. I've caught a, a few good ones on the swim bait. Hey, the Cinco was dynamite. Come on down to South Florida. I'll tell you, these canals in the Everglades are really, really a treat to fish. Mm -hmm. Hey, and thank you, yeah. Mick, for, for, <laughs> for that cushion. And thanks for, for all the help that you've done for that because that's been a great help for our fishing. Woo, son. Hey, thanks for watching today's episode. You know, without the support of the sponsors, there would be no show. So please thank them when you can. Now, get out there and do some great fishing.